We're back in today's Chelsea preseason tour GBFC video. We're going to react to the news that Conor Gallagher is being sold to Atletico Madrid come the end of the video when we arrive in Charlotte for Chelsea versus Real Madrid. The final day on the road. The series is coming to an end, but let's get into it. Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel, Chelsea's preseason tour of the USA 2024. Welcome to... Cathedral Falls, which seems to me like a relatively popular place here in West Virginia. And I say popular, we've not seen a human being for the last two hours. It is a boiling hot day. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'll keep things real with this series. Today's the first day of the trip that I've actually felt a bit frustrated, a little bit annoyed. I was driving around for five hours trying to film the video. The mic was going wrong. The flipping phone was overheating. And it's just been one of them days where after losing yesterday, just wanted to be a bit chill today, positive, but everything's been going against me, but we're here now. And that is a beautiful looking waterfall. It's my first bath I've had in like two weeks, nearly. Oh, it's a little respite from thinking about Chelsea's defending, that's for sure. So right now, we are 80% of the way through the footballing element of this trip. We have got three days left until, I guess, the GBFC Tour Series is finished. And I'll be honest, I think with every game that we see, the reaction is obviously different. You beat Club America, everyone's happy. You lose to Celtic, everyone's like... We lose to flipping Man City and we're like, you kind of expect maybe to lose to Man City. The balloon keeps blowing up and then it deflates and then it blows up and then it deflates. And I think if I was to kind of consolidate my thoughts on what's happened for Chelsea on this trip so far, I would say that we're actually learning a lot and we're learning a lot at the right times. It's better that we understand now what the weaknesses are in the squad, what the weaknesses are with the way that we're trying to play this new system much better that we do it and come unstuck in a big way against Celtic and Man City before the season starts. Last season under Pochettino, one of the, the main things about the season from an entertainment standpoint was even though we were playing bad at some points, the next game we'd go and have like a 4-4 against Man City or the draw away at Man City was good. The, the wins against Spurs, the 4-3 comeback against Man United. Chelsea were unpredictable. And I think from what we've seen in the 80% of matches that we've watched during this preseason, Chelsea are going to be so unpredictable again. And I know it's difficult to compare Club America to Man City, but it's more the case of like, I think we're going to have so many errors in us again, which I hope we were going to try and eradicate by being a bit more careful defensively. But I don't think we're going to get careful with Enzo Maresca as the manager. Speaking of careful, I've got to be careful on these roads because it's windy. We're in the state of West Virginia right now. It is absolutely stunning. The waterfall earlier was brilliant. I needed kind of like a little calming piece of nature to get me over the frustrations of spending five hours trying to upload six things we learned whilst in this beautiful environment. But we move, we hit the road, and there's a beautiful bridge coming up. Check this out. Big tune this one, it's called Live It Up. Can't tell you who sings it, but the Mustang is telling me that that is the name of the bloody tune. Today's been one of them days where we've been cruising on the road again. This is the final like road trippy part of this entire trip, which is very sad. But I'll tell you what, if you live in West Virginia, if this is your neck of the woods, then blimey do you live in a beautiful part of the world. This has been thoroughly enjoyable. I'm about to go and try and order some chicken wings. 15 chicken wings, Caribbean jerk, lemon pepper, and I can't remember what the other one was, original buffalo. We're not going too spicy today, but true story, I do love spicy food. Mm. Another thing that you guys should also know about this trip is, I put on a lot of weight during this trip, like a lot. The whole aim of our game was like, we're gonna eat whatever we wanna eat, and going in the car means you get to see everything along the way. Yeah, bridges. Bridges. Waterfalls. Like the new River Gorge Bridge that you guys can see here. Yeah. Waterfalls like earlier today. Buffalo like, Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Like it's just, it's just got a bit of everything really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but I find it very bizarre how all of this Victor Osimhen talk was kind of, everything came out in one day about Chelsea trying to strike a loan deal. And everything's just gone 
very quiet regarding any kind of potential bid or deal or signing for Victor Osimhen to Chelsea. The way I see this one going after all of this period of silence that we've seen, it was almost a week ago now that we started to see this story unfolding about Lukaku to Napoli and then Osimhen potentially coming the other way. I think the later it goes into this transfer window, the more likely it would be that Chelsea would get this loan for Victor Osimhen. Big players like Osimhen, who knows that his next move to another club is a big one. There's probably going to be big signing bonuses. It will be a big contract. Osimhen doesn't want to be going on loan this season to Chelsea without any kind of obligation for Chelsea to buy him. Chelsea are looking at this potential deal and I genuinely think the club are worried about where we stand with FFP. And it relates directly into what's happening right now with Conor Gallagher, where Chelsea Football Club are making it very clear to Gallagher that, look, if you don't sign this new contract extension, then we want you to be sold. The Osimhen deal, there won't be an Osimhen deal because I think Chelsea are worried that they're not going to have the financial capacity to pull this off. So therefore, the question is... Mark Yu, you can see this tweet here from Fabrizio Romano, Mark Yu talking about what is going to happen to him this season. I think at the moment I've seen enough of Yu during this preseason to suggest that he should be and could be in and around the Chelsea squad. That is also a difficult one to say because at the same time I do think he will be very raw and he might struggle to meet the expectations. You've got to remember, and we've seen this countless times with Chelsea players during preseason, Marco Marin. Looked like the second coming of Lionel Messi about 10 plus years ago in pre-season. Ross Barkley would always look like prime Frank Lampard in pre-season. And then the season comes and we're like, oh, maybe we needed to sign a Ross Barkley replacement, but he was so good in pre-season that we thought we, you get the idea here. I don't want that to happen to Mark Yu. I think he's going to work his ass off. The question is, will he be able to score enough goals when the intensity is high? in the Premier League. I'm excited to see him again though. It's one of those at the moment where all the games that we have, there are certain players that I'm like, I need more minutes from him. I want more minutes from him. I want to see him there. But I've got my players that I'm excited about. I've got the players I think we should buy. And I've got the ones that I'm like, I don't know where it's going. And Mudrik is one of those. And are we going for Osimhen or not? I think the longer we wait, the more we could end up at the end of this transfer window thinking this should have been the window that we sorted the squad out ready for this project, ready for Maresca to have the time and the squad ready at his disposal from the start. And at the minute, don't think we're quite there yet. Google Maps has decided it wants to just take a huge dump on us and take us down a road that is not really designed for a Mustang. For a Mustang or just like any foreigner who has no idea where they are in general. It's absolutely beautiful though. It's gorgeous and it was not part of the plan but we've got sheer cliff faces on my left hand side, bro. I'm not about that. I've actually really been low key, haven't said anything on the vlog yet, but all I want to do is see a bear. So actually, this was actually all me. Where are the bears at? Hello, man, I got some blueberries for your ass. You ain't gonna find a toll on this road. That is what I call an adventure. We got lost in Buck Road. If you've ever been here before, I don't know, just let me know. Don't tell lies though, because I feel like we've just been like on a one of a kind little trip there. So we've now come to an absolutely gorgeous spot that I don't really think the camera does justice. This is Mount Airy Overlook. I think wow. we're just under a hundred miles away from Charlotte, darling. Our final stop oh. of the trip. Feels good to stretch my legs. So nice. Sun is setting behind us over there. So the time right now is roughly midnight in the UK. Fabrizio Romano has been tweeting about the Conor Gallagher situation. He's been responding to a couple of people's social media posts talking about when there will be an outcome to this saga for want of any kind of better terminology. I'm pretty sure we'll get an answer as to what Gallagher's answer is. And I've also got a phone call myself in a few minutes time with somebody who might be able to get me inside the stadium for the preview again tomorrow. It's been good. We've had a couple of previews that have kind of been on the road. A couple of them have actually been in the stadiums at the Levi Stadium, the Atlanta Stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's just nice to get in there and get that feeling pitch side. So stay tuned to tomorrow's vlogs. I think 
we're going to be inside again. Gallagher situation. I don't know what's going to happen, guys. I really don't know what's going to happen here. What have you been doing in the bushes? What do you think I've been doing in the bushes? And the sun is setting on yet another wonderful day in the US of A. Do you know how many states we have been in today, Georgia? How many states? States of the US, yeah. Do you know how many it is? So far, three. Three? Mm -hmm. Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia. And soon to be... North Carolina. North Carolina. Four states in one day. That's 4,000 likes on this video, we hope. Uh, so yeah, happy to, to get you in tomorrow. Um, so we already actually have... We're off the dog and bone, and we have got access to the stadium tomorrow. So the next video you see here on GBFC will have access to the Charlotte Stadium, the Bank of America Stadium, where Chelsea play Real Madrid. All right, so just as I was literally about to wrap up the video, I checked my phone before I started editing this video and exclusive from Fabrizio Romano. Conor Gallagher has verbally agreed terms and said yes to join Atletico Madrid. Here we go to follow today after formal steps. Five year deal. La Liga's record fee this summer, 40 million euros to Chelsea, brokered by Ali Barrett from Epic Sports and Paul Nichols, to be fair, the way that it started to get very sour, you could have seen this one coming. Me personally, I think that there was definitely a desire at some point from Gallagher to stay, but then the terms that Chelsea offered him weren't in alignment with what he wanted to sign at this stage in his career. And you've got to remember, footballers, they, they only really have, apart from if your name is Alvaro Morata or Romelu Lukaku or Cristiano Ronaldo, there's only so many big moves that a player can make in his career, particularly when it is for a five-year contract. And, you know, Gallagher's not one of the youngest anymore. So he wants to be signing for a club that are going to give him a five-year deal. Chelsea weren't willing to do that. And if Maresca didn't want him to be or didn't think he was going to be a big part of the system, if we're talking from a football side of things, and I know a lot of people will be upset about this because of the connections that Gallagher has to Chelsea. He's been there since he was a kid. But I would say that realistically, football-wise, I think that Chelsea have signed other players to be able to play in this Maresca kind of way better than Gallagher does. That is the harsh reality of the situation. If you're a big fan of Connor, obviously there was the big banner that was put up at Stamford Bridge in the shed at the end of last season. I'm disappointed to see him go. I think that his, his work rate is insane. The fact that with the whole team getting injured last season, he stayed fit all year, pretty much played every match under Pochettino, and he's been at the club for so long. I always find it sad when a player who's literally grown up at Chelsea almost gets shunned out in a way and is moving to Atletico Madrid. On a personal level for him, I think this will be a great move. I think literally Diego Simeone is the perfect football manager to utilise and get the best out of Conor Gallagher. He'll be playing in the Champions League every season, competing for La Liga, and I think this is a good move for him. I really do. It's sad, but at the end of the day, these things happen. There's no one bigger than the club. We're always going to have affinities to certain players and then they're going to move on or we're going to sign new players that we're going to love just as much. That's the nature of the beast. That's exactly what football is. But anyway, going to talk about this a bit more when we get the here we goes tomorrow in case anything doesn't happen. If, if, I don't know. Gallagher pulls out last minute before he puts pen to paper. We don't know. But a lot of you have been saying, what do you make these videos on? <laughs> this contraption. This. <laughs> iPhone 15, Sarah Monic receiver. These two mics, ceremonic microphones. And a baby tripod. And a little baby tripod. Like, that's all it is. <laughs> Got a mirror, some soap, classic toilet where, you know, all goes down, shower, cabinet thing there for clothes. This is probably the nicest room we've had on the trip so far. Legit, this is definitely the nicest this room. This is the best one. We've got a sofa. You should have seen what we TV. slept in last night. It was like, Line. It was not ideal. It was not great. And then magic. Gonna wrap this vlog up now. We're in Charlotte tomorrow. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Your match preview. I'm gonna try and upload it as early as I can so that the majority of you can see it before you go to bed. And then obviously it's match day, which will be the final video of this GBFC Chelsea Tour series. Thank you guys for watching. 
I'll see you in the next one. Come on, you blues.